Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today, no 1940s scenario. There were a lot of those recently, so it's time to go back to 1905. The scenario was created by Lance McMillan. He sent it in through the link down below in the description, which is where you can deposit your scenarios. Please don't put those in the comments, because then the comment section would explode, as we've seen a couple of months ago when I didn't have that form on my website yet. It is August 1914. Britain and Germany are expected to be at war in just a few hours. You are Admiral Ernest Trubridge, commander of the Royal Navy 1st Cruiser Squadron in the Mediterranean. You're leading four armoured cruisers, HMS Defence, Warrior, Black Prince and HMS Duke of Edinburgh. You suspect that once war has officially been declared, you'll be tasked with locating and engaging two ships of the Germans' Mediterranean Squadron, the battle cruiser SMS Gubben and the light cruiser SMS Breslau commanded by Admiral Wilhelm Sochon. As the afternoon sun sets on the last day of peace in Europe, for the next four years you receive a report that the Germans have been spotted and you set off in pursuit. Now historically, Trubridge never met up with his German counterpart and he called off the chase when his ships began to run low on fuel. But what if the British had actually located the Gubben, so the heavy cruiser, oh sorry, the battle cruiser? In this classic, almost happened Great War Naval Battle, your mission as Truebridge is to eliminate the German ships as a threat. You, deserve, you achieve a decisive victory if you manage to sink both the German ships, so both the battle cruiser and the light cruiser. You achieve a substantial victory if you sink the German battle cruiser, and the fate of the light cruiser is then immaterial. You receive a marginal victory if you manage to disable, so at least 50% structural and or flotation damage, but not sink both the German warships. And you lose if none of the above conditions are met. Now I get four heavy cruisers and three destroyers versus a battle cruiser and a light cruiser, but they have a slight tech advantage. Now initially I was thinking, is this balanced? Because I get seven ships and they get two. So I seriously outnumber them. But then I remembered how effective battle cruisers and battleships, and especially their secondary armament, can be against smaller ships. So the destroyers, they might look numerous, but I have seen battle cruisers and battleships alike take that numerical superiority away very, very quickly. So it's going to be the heavy cruisers that deal the significant blows to the battle cruiser. There is another rule. The British heavy cruisers can only be outfitted with hull-mounted internal torpedo tubes. No external slash deck-mounted torpedo tubes are allowed. However, the British destroyers are under no such restriction. Well, that's a good thing, because the British destroyers are not up to my design, and on top of that, they don't have any kind of built-in torpedo launchers. Now, let's have a look. We have an Armoured Cruiser 5 hull, and this thing has a displacement of 12,750. Let's upgrade the armor to Krupp 2. Let's go with uh, the multiple expansion steam engine. We're going to be coal fired. We're going to use induced draft boilers and one auxiliary petrol engine. 15% water pumping and better ship repair is very much appreciated. As for the speed, hmm. 27 knots might, in fact. Oh, what? Okay, I kind of build it above 13,000 tons. 13,450, 350, 100, come on. There we go. Uh, 27 knots might be relatively quick for this day and age. Because if I go back to 25 knots, that saves me about 1,000 tons in weight. Engines were pretty damn large. Armament. Centerline guns. Uh, we got the Mark II, Mark III, Mark III. Why is the 8 inch gun a Mark II? And the 9 inch gun a Mark III? The hell? This is weird. I'll let the devs know about this because I don't think that this is intended. Sure enough, this is a slightly different shape of the turret, but still, that should be a Mark III. Especially if all the bigger caliber guns are Mark III. Now, let's see what I can fit. We're going to use the... No, not the Mark II. We're going to use the Mark uh, III 9-inch guns. And maybe we can use the wing turrets on this one. 
Oh, yes. Good lord, can you put all that on? Are you kidding? Oh, that was too many of them. Gotcha. Triple barrel had not yet been invented. Understood. I wonder if this is viable. Oh, that's not a center line. Or sorry, that is a center line, it's not a side mount. Um, hmm, this might actually work. Let's see if the funnels are willing to fit right down the middle. They are indeed. Holy shit. That's a lot of firepower for a cruiser. That's an eight gun broadside. And I still have displacement to spare. Sure enough, I still need to add some protection. Otherwise, all that firepower might go to waste pretty damn quick. But nonetheless, I find this to be a pretty impressive armament for a li for well, not for a light cruiser, for a heavy cruiser. Uh, yeah, right. I still think they need to limit this based on age. Electro-hydraulic turrets in 1905 seem way too advanced. Say so they did do it with the reloads, but not with the turrets. Now, a rangefinder would also be nice to have. Otherwise, I'm not going to have any kind of accuracy. Ooh, <laughs> I'm 10 tons short of displacement. Um, advanced radio. No, it's too heavy. Arm him. Oof. Armor is not great. <laughs> Four inch belt. <laughs> 1.8 belt extended. Oh no. Still, I don't want to sacrifice any of these guns. So we're just going to go. I will rename one of my ships to uh, the HMS Defense. HMS. Um, this is still something that I would like to see change. The HMS. You don't get any kind of um, letters before the actual name of the ship. Whereas it is uh, fairly standard for the bridge to be called HMS. Uh, I know that the Dutch use H and LMS. We got, of course, the USS, uh, SMS for German ships. But in the game, it's always just the, well, just the, let's say the flat name of the ship, and that's it. Oh, I might have forgotten something about bulkheads. <laughs> um, I'll sacrifice some speed and gain a bulkhead. Preferably lots of bulkheads. 23.5, and then tack on some more armor. 2.8 belt extended, 4 inch belt, 3.5 inch turret, 3.3 inch conning. There, 2.7.3.5.3.5. No secondary armament whatsoever. These guns fire every 34 seconds. And between four cruisers with a broadside of eight guns per cruiser, I'm not too concerned about the light cruiser. I don't feel like I need any kind of secondary armament for that. Let's go. One thing I did not put onto these ships is a torpedo blister, nor torpedo tubes of my own. I do, however, have Saturn, Teviot, and Mystic. And these guys come with torpedoes at a range of a mere 5.1. Torpedo visibility plus 8. And torpedo size is 18 inch. These are... Well... I'm not sure if these are very survivable. This is just three tubes. With the stern tube being very useful. Because they can turn every which way. This one I'm not too sure. Alright, the enemy has been spotted to the north. So that's where we're going to go. I'm not sure why the Essex is not just part of the heavy cruiser group. It would make a bit more sense, at least for control, if that thing would join formation. Interesting setup. Very interesting. Let's put it to the test and see if this is actually not just an interesting looking ship, but also a combat effective one. Continue cruising north. DDs are going to scout ahead. One other thing that I would love to see in this particular display is what kind of spotting range do I have? So at what range do I get detected under, let's say, normal circumstances? Because, of course, I don't exactly know what sort of technology they have. In this day and age, they cannot have radar. That's not something that they would be able to access. 
But still, Jesus, look at that. That's 6.5 clicks out. Uh, that's really close. Heavy cruisers. Commence turn to port. DD, set a smoke screen. Five seven. I'm just gonna do a suicide rush with the DDs. Range five one. Battle cruisers turning. Making a port course correction. It actually has fewer guns than I do. It has six main armaments and then a few smallers. Just a few wing turrets. Oh no, actually there's another turret back there. And a lot of casemates. Of which four seem to be trained directly at the Saturn. Target range four. Hold. Light cruiser somewhere over there. Oh. Oh. Oh dear. That's the end of Saturn. Saturn, either please die or don't. But not this... This half-assed shit, because I need you to get out of the way of the launch of the Teviot. Come on, girl. Torpedo's turning. Come on! Torpedo, away. Single launcher, dual launcher. Perfect. Now, let's see if we can still get you to survive this encounter. I don't really expect so, but here's the trying. Heavy cruisers are opening up with all the guns. Without an identification yet, though, it is unsure as to what kind of accuracy, or sorry, what kind of pen chance I get. 97 ID, 100 ID. Show me. Go on. Grafspey. 22% chance to pen that ship with 9-inch guns. You are one tough cookie, aren't you? Minimum bulkheads, but 6.9-inch belt armor. Turning circle, 587. That's actually pretty good. They're still working on killing off the Saturn, which by some miracle is not dead yet. And the torpedoes from Saturn are cruising towards the Graf Spee. Now they have a bit higher visibility than I would like at that plus 8%, but I think, oh, hello. I think it is possible to try and get a few of those to hit. I don't have an idea on the light cruiser yet, but I know that it is the light cruiser. Uh, hold off. Graf Spee has spotted the Crescent, the heavy cruiser. 23.2% chance to pen. AKA, you're probably not gonna do any kind of damage at this range. No, see? Bounce, 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 bounce. The thing that might do a lot of damage, though, is this. The torpedoes. But the Graf Spee has detected those. You have an anti-torpedo blister 3 and an anti-flood 2. I wonder if that's going to be sufficient. The Teviot is going on a very dangerous torpedo run against the light cruiser. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Teviot. Torpedo away. Dual launcher, single launcher. Turn back. Um, Teviot has detected enemy torpedoes. Maximum port turn. The Dresden, the light cruiser, has also detected torpedoes. But with a turning circle quite similar to the battle cruiser, she might not be able to turn. The battle cruiser, however, is perfectly capable of turning. As she might have gotten a bit more warning than I would have liked. Still, it looks like the Dresden is going to be hit. Potentially by all three. Hydrophone stations had not yet been invented, if I'm not cons if I'm not mistaken. So uh, they did not really have a lot of warning. Oh, hold on. Oh, just on the stern. Just on the stern. I thought it was actually going to miss. But that was quite close. Um, Mystic. Hello, Mystic. I thought I ordered you to go after the Graf Spee. Oh, there's a torpedo. The Graf Spee did get hit. Taking a rudder hit. 
Two compartments are going under. And now the 9 inch is able to penetrate the mid belt. But that is on the Dresden? Yeah, it's on the, the Dresden, on the light cruiser. I don't really have any kind of chance like that on the battle cruiser. Although the battle cruiser, damn. That's three compartments. And she's still... No, is she holding? No, she's still flooding. 39. Her top speed's 25 knots. Although with that much water on board, you're not going to get that kind of speed anymore. Mystic. I need you to charge in. And get rid of that battle cruiser once and for all. You probably need to get her once with a torpedo pretty much on the bows. If you can get that, I'd be happy. Teviot, turn back. And it looks like even the Saturn is still alive. The ship might need some repairs, but hey, she's still here. Chance to pen. Light cruiser, 99.9. .9. That's good enough. Chance to hit. Yeah, let's not go there. The chance to hit's probably not good. Maintain fire on the light cruiser. Because we're not likely to pen that battle cruiser at this range. Mystic. Ooh, Mystic. Survive, please. 20 seconds and you gotta smoke. No! 10 seconds. Zigzag. Smoke up. Anti-flood. Two. I'll take it. Ooh, there's another flooding. And you're running out of torpedo range, aren't you? Fine. Torpedo the Dresden. Poor turn, poor turn, poor turn. Weapons away. Mystic fallback. It looks like the Dresden did try to repay the favor and also launched a torpedo. They carry those... Port and starboard. Unfortunately, that means that with that turn, the Dresden is not likely to eat a torpedo. Three-inch gun hits the DD. Stern extended. Serious damage going on. Teviot. Oh, <laughs> there goes Mystic. Uh, Dresden's perfectly fine. Torpedoes have sailed past. Pretty far to the stern, too. She is, however, starting to flood. Bow's been hit. So these things do seem to be fairly effective. He said, as he watched the ship actually only deliver 28 points of damage. In total, 80 points, 245, and 332. Oh, well, it's a different age. You're not going to get any kind of massive damage numbers in the range of 40,000 or something like that. There's another fire. I've got to make sure that this thing doesn't spook me with a torpedo, because that's something that these ships are not terribly well equipped to handle. See? That. Come on, Dresden. More flooding. Another compartment under the third funnel. You must be going pretty deep at this point. Yeah, that ship is pretty... Well, actually... Yeah, stern looks a little deep. That's those three compartments on the stern that have been flooded. Holy shit, the whole deck is awash now. Now, I don't have a lot of chance to pen the battle cruiser, but does that go both ways? No, that does not go both ways. Because the battle cruiser has a pretty good chance to pen me. With 13 inch guns. I might still have a couple of DDs operational. Ish. But it's going to have to be up to the heavy cruisers to try and take out that battle cruiser. Dresden just got a flash fire, but still surviving. Another fire. Chance to pen? 75. I don't really want to sail past that ship for fear of getting torpedoed again. 
Buoyancy dropping. Flooding. 37. Holding 37. Come on. Tough light cruiser, this thing. It's able to survive for quite a while. 80% chance to pen, but a very high ricochet chance. Switch to high explosive for a bit. Now, is the defense able to get off those port side guns, or am I not... What the hell was that? Or am I not angled enough? Let's angle a bit more. With the risk of getting torpedoed. There's another... Oh, torpedo destroyed. Good thing. Flooding. Yeah, see, all you need was a bit of high explosive uh, treatment. She is still burning and flooding. 36% chance to hit at a range of about a kilometer and change. Another fire. Now the ricochet chance, at least for the defense, is going down. So, oh, nice. So maybe it's time to switch back to AP. I'm gonna be about medium ricochet chance. Flash fire. We can see. Done. Okay. Four heavy cruisers versus one battle cruiser. This battle has not yet been decided. I want to see if the Teviot, even with her modicum speed of 16 knots, can still intercept the battle cruiser. Because I'm kind of relying on that ship to do the damage. Seeing as the battle. No, the heavy cruisers. Well, with the exception of maybe setting the ship on fire. Oh, ow. I don't really have that much of a plan to sink this thing. Sure, I'm getting closer. <sighs> Defense is not going to survive that. Crescent. Steady course. Defense, fall back. One thing I completely overlooked in the design phase is my propellant. I'm still using ballastite. Hold on a minute. 33. No, it's not good enough. I'm hoping that this battle cruiser gets so distracted with the fire that they have to put on the heavy cruisers that they just ignore the destroyer. And I'm not sure if that's actually going to hold out. Let's switch to armor piercing and see what that does. Oh, we're starting to get some damage in. Defense is once again taking hits. Looks like most of the stuff is just ricocheting, if it hits at all. DD, range, 3-6. The battlecruiser still has most guns trained on the, the, yeah, on the heavies, with the exception of the 2-inch guns. Teviot. Oh, we inflicted flooding. That's nice. Teviot has launched her torpedoes. And that's about the last salvo that she still has remaining right now. Defense's rudder has been repaired. Okay, very good. Fall back with the formation. Time to go with the Amphrotite. Essex and Crescent. No, hold on a minute. Why is the Crescent the lead ship? That makes no sense. Uh, I need you to join formation four. I need you to join formation four, and I need you to join formation four. There. Why the hell would they do that? Torpedoes? No, they're gonna miss! That was not the plan. What about the other DD? Oh, never mind. I am slowly but steadily sinking this thing simply by flooding it. But I'm concerned about the chance of that battle cruiser to just land a couple of hits and severely damage the Amphrotite. Look at that chance to pen. It's pretty much a guarantee at this point. The only thing that's holding its back is the accuracy. Because that went everywhere. What happens if I let the ship pick the ammunition? Is that going to make any kind of respectable difference? Ooh, 
damage to the funnel. So if the ship itself is alright. I am putting myself at a bit of a disadvantage by going nose in. Because it means I only get, well, the one, maybe two turrets. Only the bow turrets. My reasoning behind it is if I turn too much, I might open myself up to a bigger damage volley from the Graf Spee. There is the chance that the Graf Spee is going to pen the ship pretty badly. And with that, cause a lot of flooding and immediately put the ship out of action. Or at the very least, mess up my formation. Saturn is coming in-ish. Teviot. Amphitrite's on fire. Come on, Graf Spee. Oh, see, that's the thing that I was worried about. Right there. We're slowly whittling away structural integrity, but this thing still has a lot left. Well, there is one more thing that I can do. It's not necessarily pretty or honorable. But it's pretty likely to work. If... If I can go fast enough. And those of you who have been watching my channel for longer might know what I have in mind. Never mind. Battlecruiser got the hood experience. Flash fire. And I know a flash fire is not what killed the hood. The hood got her ammo detonated. Nevertheless, the damage has been done. And that actually got, um, well, it got a bit exciting there at the end with the heavy cruiser starting to take significant damage. But overall, the British are successful. So that concludes today's scenario. If you have one of your own, be sure to send that in. Link is down below in the description. I do, however, have a bit of a backlog at this point. Because let me see how many... But there is the opportunity... Well, there's, <laughs> there's the guarantee that it's going to take me a bit of time. So bear with me. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little skirmish. And I'll catch you guys soon for another one.